Yeah, <laughs> well, the very first time, you know, people were like, oh my goodness, what is that? And why are you trying to get it out in the middle of a session? And uh, <laughs> But as soon as they heard it, then they're like, oh wow, that sounds amazing. <laughs> My musical background is basically uh, through Irish music, and my parents really liked the Irish music. We travelled around England, Ireland, Scotland in a camper van when I was very young. We settled in Ireland, a lot of it was because of the Irish music. My main instrument, I suppose, is the piano accordion, as well as playing the piano. The most common Irish accordion is the button accordion, where each note is a different sound. But the piano accordion obviously translates very well to these kind of instruments. Yeah, well, the very first time, you know, people were like, oh my goodness, what is that? And why are you trying to get it out in the middle of a session? And uh, <laughs> But as soon as they heard it, then they're like, oh wow, that sounds amazing. So I think it's good that Roly went out and took real samples of real instruments. Even without changing any of the settings, you know, obviously the different, the, how, how the vibrato sounds and how, how it changes when you press in versus giving it a little gentle touch. And if someone might have done, programmed something cool to happen up here, you know, when you push forward, if maybe just a bit more power or crunch or even a different octave coming in or something like that. Once people hear it, they're like, oh, that sounds class. I suppose they're not expecting it. And there's obviously the visual element that everyone's like, oh my God, what's that? Um, I should maybe get a big label that says what it is on it. So the size is perfect because having it on your lap is a total game changer. It's the fact that you're in a kind of a unique playing position. You can be snuck in there amongst all the other musicians. You're not, you know, having your big thing in between you and the other people. I have these sliders. This one here is mapped to the volume. Because I find with electronic instruments, it's, you kind of have to ride the volume a little bit there because you've got quite a lot of headroom. Something I like about the violin, particularly in Irish music, the fact that you can play just a bit of vibrato in the middle of a fast tune. You so know. like if you're going... To be able to just take that little moment and just go, you know, is something I've always wanted to be able to do, and obviously you can't do that on the piano accordion. You can go, if you wanted to go crazy, you can, you can go full, full width. <laughs> and I suppose on the left hand, they use a lot of this kind of slide, slide down, so that's something that cuts through quite well. When it goes back to the root, to be able to go, you know, it's kind of cool. There is a fascination with Irish music. I suppose it is linked with the culture. To a certain extent, it is a little bit linked with the nightlife, uh, you know, but there's no harm in that. Irish music is very collaborative, maybe in comparison to, say, if you're learning classical piano at home on your own. It's a good way of combining socialising with music, and I think it's good for musicians to get out and meet people. So yeah, the music scene in Cork is very vibrant. Obviously, so Irish music is a great way of integrating a few pints into your um, <laughs> general playing. So there's a lot of sessions on performance opportunities and concerts and things like that in Cork City Centre, which is brilliant. The unusual thing about Irish music, I suppose, uh, in comparison to a lot of genres of music, is that it's you learn by ear. So it might take someone a little bit longer if they're not used to it to learn something by ear. An Irish musician would be very good at being able to just play some Rihanna riff, you know, without thinking about it, as long as you keep the rhythm going, which is the most important thing, really. Irish music is a dance music, so it has to be... You have a lot of this kind of foot tapping, which you get killed for in um, classical music. Um, but it's a very important thing in Irish music, because it kind of helps everyone stay together, and it keeps that pulse going. Sometimes you see the pints just slowly working their way and you're playing away and you're like, oh, I, I need to stop and save the pint, you know. <laughs> I think Irish music has made a bit of a comeback in recent years.
it's just amazing how fast you can play um, with very little effort. So the default on this road sound, you don't really have to hit it much. Like the lightest touch is enough to carry the melody even. And you don't have to press harder, obviously, but you can if you want. Um, which kind of means that you can, you can play the stamina, I think, is a lot better because you don't have to be hammering onto the keys like if it was a fully weighted piano keyboard. It's very hard. I do a lot of these things called triplets, so you're doing the fingers from, like you're doing 4-3-2 very quickly or 4-3-1. Um, and that's used a lot in Irish music. You know, if the melody has got like a long note in it, the expectation is that you won't just play it as a long note. That um, normally you just put some sort of a, a roll, which should be kind of thing, or you do a triplet, which is the kind of my default thing. So you can kind of, because it's so fast, the action on this, and you don't have to press all the way in for every note in the triplet, you can really kind of go lightning fast. Like So yeah, so I wasn't expecting it to be able to do that really um, and that's a big thing for me really because that's something that most people find kind of impressive about my piano accordion playing is that that to be able to consistently to get that those three notes every time um, but it's amazing that it, that it can do that. Some of the videos that I've been doing, I've been deliberately doing it in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a field, just to kind of take it out of the studio, because I feel it's an instrument that should be played in a real life setting, rather than, you know, just doing a little bit of noodling for, for something that you're producing. I think just to be able to use it from start to finish professionally for three hours for a gig and play 50 tunes on it, play 10,000 notes, to treat it and, and expect it to be a real instrument, to be able to perform like that. It sat better probably in the trad music circle than I expected. And also the ability to play between the notes is surprisingly useful too. Some of the tunes like... Um, the note that you're looking for there isn't a G sharp, it's somewhere between uh, a G and a G sharp. Those are notes that I always try and avoid playing on the piano accordion. I just actually just skip over that note and I let the flute players and the violin players go to the actual note that it should be. Whereas with this, I'm kind of starting to be able to be a bit more, more confident and even if I'm starting the note at a G sharp, I can quickly just bend it down a tiny bit just to make it sit better, which is something that you can't do on a conventional piano. Uh, so I started doing a music video every week now called Seaboard Sundays. I kind of like the alliteration of it and I think it's good to push myself to release things. And I think it's interesting to share this instrument. I'm asking people to join me for these Seaboard Sundays videos that I wouldn't normally have the gumption to kind of approach because I feel that like what I'm doing with this is unusual and you know they're going very well so far. Everyone's kind of been blown away by the sound of it and just how it fits with the Irish music. It's been certainly interesting. I'm trying to show off the instrument I suppose and the other people that I'm playing with more so than it just being all about me. Since getting this uh, seaboard, uh, I think my style has changed a little bit. And um, certainly, when I'm playing the piano, I'm <laughs> I have to stop myself from trying to wiggle a bit, and you know, obviously, I was a bit disappointed when nothing happens. But I think it's opened up a bit of a different style of, of playing, and it's kind of opened up the possibility of playing slower things, really. Because on the piano accordion, yeah, it's a good sound, and you can accompany yourself with the left hand. But fundamentally, the, the right hand is never that interesting on the piano accordion for slow tunes, mostly because you can't change the vibrato. Obviously, a violin player, if they're playing a slow air or something, they're going to be able to change the sound of that one note. Even if it's perfect in tune, they're not doing vibrato. You know, the way they're holding the bow, the pressure on the finger, the pressure on the bow, the angle where it is close to the bridge, whatever, it's going to all change the sound. It doesn't have to be vibrato like that. It could just be a bit more like a bit of a growl, you know, um, that you can introduce in and you have time to do that in the slow tunes. So that's kind of opened up being able to play slow airs. You know, I played it in whistle a lot and that would be my main instrument or the flute for playing slow airs because you can 
you know, you can play a little bit out of tune, you can do the vibrato and, and all that. Um, but now, you know, I'd be playing more slow things on this. But I suppose my main priority was just to get out there and start playing it and start using it in real life situations.